residential program manager at Lifehouse. Um, so Lifehouse is a small nonprofit right in downtown Duluth that works with homeless and street engaged young people between the ages of 14 and 24. So as an agency, we have a wide variety of programs. Um, at the heart of what we do is our youth drop-in center where youth can come build trusting relationships with caring adults, um, also get meals, basic needs, participate in fun activities, um, and really start to build some trust and potentially then get referrals to some of our other programs. So we have community-wide housing programs. Um, as an agency, we manage um, about 50 beds across the community. That includes our licensed programs as well as um, transitional housing and permanent supportive housing for young people. Um, we're also the coordinated entry, um, entry point for young people, so anyone under the age or who needs to take their PI SPDAT to get on housing wages yes. on um, goals. So in my particular role, I oversee our two licensed programs. So those are the two programs at Lifehouse that work with youth who are minors or who can house minors. Um, and both programs, the Loft Teen Shelter um, and Soul House, work with youth in between the ages of uh, 15 and 19, um, male, female, and gender non-conforming youth. Um, and we have a 24-7 staff who are trained in trauma-informed care and harm reduction who are really working with youth with some intensive case management to provide them the support that they need to reach their goals, be those employment goals, education goals, getting connected to mental health services, um, kind of what whatever it be. Yeah, um, climate justice to me really means looking at climate change in a broader context than just how it affects the environment and looking at who it affects. And recognizing um, that global warming or climate change, or whatever we want to call it, really has the greatest impact on our most marginalized communities. So the people with the least amount of control over environmental impact are suffering the greatest consequences. Honestly, Lifehouse's mission has not undergone any kind of substantial change based on climate justice or global warming, um, but it is something that we're mindful of in our program. So, um, you know, we recycle, for example, um, we've gone paperless, so kind of thinking about our environmental impact, but as far as service provision um, or kind of our mission, nothing has, we haven't had any climate change. I do, um, and it's really interesting, this is something that I've thought a lot about, um, just as far as how, you know, we talked about how, you know, thinking about climate justice, the biggest impact is happening on those most marginalized communities, but right now if you look at impact, I feel like a lot of the biggest kind of most substantial impact where people are losing housing are happening in places outside of Minnesota and the Duluth area, right? Um, so we're talking about fires in California, we're talking about major storms um, on the eastern and southern coasts, and I think that as the climate in other places change, we know that populations are transient. So the way that most people structure their lives in the United States is we are really mobile. Lots of people move to where a job is or where family is or kind of whatever else. Um, and also I think that families living in poverty or experiencing homeless are also really transient and are going to where resources are. So I think about how as some places in the United States become less stable, how that could have bigger impact in some places mm -hmm. than the more. Yeah, in my work I think it is easy to say that in our home community and then when you're looking at the broader context of climate implications the people who are at higher risk for homelessness um, are folks who are low income but also uh, you know people of color na the native community um, and folks of african heritage folks who identify um, as queer or lgbtq um, are disproportionately um, served by our agency so for example in the native community tell you that in Duluth, that's in between one and two percent of our population. Lifehouse as an agency, um, last year it was about 11 percent of the youth that we served. And as an agency, we served, um, I believe it was about 800 youth last year. In the programs that I work for, so in our licensed housing program, it's about 50 percent of the youth we serve um, identify as Native. And so that's a population in our home community that is already disproportionately affected by home like yeah, definitely, people. definitely. Um, so I'm a women's studies graduate from UMD, and during my time there, I learned about a movement called ecofeminism that had a huge impact on kind of how I see the world and how I see social justice work. Um, so ecofeminism was developed um, by feminist folks like uh, Greta Gard in the United States and Bandana Shiva in India. If you haven't learned about those women, I would encourage you to go do some reading. Um, but the idea that um, kind of the oppression against the against women um, and against marginalized folks in general, people of color, um, people living in poverty, and the destruction of the environment um, go hand in hand. And that those things are not totally separate issues, but are actually intrinsically tied to one another. So if we kind of look at things big picture and aren't hyper-focused, um, I think we're most effective in the work that we do. 
Yeah, I think in Duluth we really, really, really need um, to be focused on our housing crisis. Um, and I think that's something that we have a lot of community members who are working really hard on, and we're not quite working fast enough. We're not there yet. Mm -hmm. um, but there's um, the Affordable Housing Coalition that is a community-wide group that gets together made up of individuals and agency is, um, who've been working on issues. Um, there's the Homeless Bill of Rights um, that has been kind of going through city council at the local level. Um, that I think are ways that, you know, in the ways that issues are tied together but maybe separate, so those are maybe homelessness issues. But I also think, and this isn't necessarily tied to the particular work that I'm doing, but I think about local impact and how people adapt. Um, you know, folks, Native folks who either, um, or anyone who's harvesting local food who sugars, so who harvests maple syrup every year, or who goes ricing, so um, are harvesting wild rice, they are, they are noticing differences um, in what they can harvest. Um, so I actually um, harvest maple syrup, and one of the things, I mean, last year was like an incredibly slow year, and sugar runs when temperatures are at this sweet spot, right, where it gets cold enough at night and warm enough during the day, and you need to stay in that zone long enough in order for trees to have sap run, in order to collect sap. And so as cl the climate is changing and is less predictable, um, our ability to harvest our own local foods that are connected to people's cultural experiences, but also food access are changing, so.